seems like when you're doing your zigzag, it works well to have on the zigzag just inside of two for stitch length and about four for stitch width, tension five. Works pretty well for this fabric for what we're doing right now. I'm gonna check it and make sure that I want your stitch length probably a little closer to three when you're just doing straight. Not the end of the world, but better that way if you don't do it right. This is my sample piece. My sample piece is getting a little busy on the back. I've got to keep all those threads from getting inside your machine. I'm just gonna see what I think of this stitch length. That would work. It's a little long. Let's actually see what we think of two. I just want to make sure you're not going to trip over yourself because you can get it so close together that it ends up not being a straight stitch. Okay, so if we keep you at two, it's nice and fine here, which would be nice and heavy duty. Okay. But and you shouldn't have to change anything. I can set it this way and not change anything, except this dial. Okay. Going from straight to diagonal and that's yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're doing the zigzag stitch to, uh, to make... To bind edges. To bind edges. Where it's marked on the pattern. Where it's marked on the pattern, okay. I'm gonna start doing that. This is the exterior piece. Actually, it's two exterior pieces. Take one out. I don't roll that fabric over there. There's stuff I got, you guys. So, I'm going to... Start here, as I can, binding these edges, because Dad says he wants to not do hems because they take too long. Makes sense. I always make sure there is a ridge on the foot. Can you see that? There's a ridge right here on the foot. See that ridge? Yeah. Right inside there. Yeah. If you keep fabric to that, you're probably going to be okay. So you, maybe you can't see it past here, but you can see that the fabric lines up, the edge lines up with that, that ridge there. Okay. You should be okay with that. of beveled anything, you want to get a 45 when you're doing a 45 properly. Um, so I had to zigzag out. I'm kind of tight. Don't do it like I do. I had to zigzag out to where when I rotated the fabric, it would make a nice it would set me up to be at the right spot doing the next part of the L there. Okay. Alright, and that's how we're going to bind hems, bind edges rather, um, so we don't have to worry about all of those hems. That's why I'm being a little picky about stitch width and length. I, I want you to be able to really hang on to those edges at least a little bit. You want the, it, it's nicer to have a needle in the fabric, but if you do that, don't pull on the needle. Okay, so... It's easier to do to do the rotation. It'll keep your thread from pulling. Okay. If you keep the needle in there, but if you do that... Don't pull the needle. Don't pull on, uh, don't pull on the fabric, because it'll pull the needle exactly, and that'll wear on your machine. Okay. But if you do it that way, it's just easier. Okay. It's bad etiquette, but it's easier. Should I do that? I pulled the needle by accident? Yeah. Don't do that. This is 
nice duck cloth. Very obedient. I don't like to get stuck in things. Very good to learn on. It's like that plan for it. See, I got to the end, the edge of the fabric a little close there, and it kind of started to chew on it, but this duck cloth, it doesn't want to chew on it much. Okay. Other fabrics, not as nice. Oh, probably the black would have problems? Perhaps. Finer threads in the okay. fabric. I'm going to shut this off because it, it 